friends and welcome to wikipediaworld.com your destination to online education friends as in the last session we learn about the types of physical properties where we understood the physical state in the detailed discussion so here in the session we shall learn the second physical property that is luster where we shall start with the brief introduction and at the end we shall conclude the luster property that is the gradation of the luster property with respect to groups and periods in the modern periodic table so friends let's start with the session and learn the luster property of an element friends when you look around you'll find some object which are very shiny you can you'll also find some object which are not very shiny or they are moderate in shininess so in terms of chemistry we shall term these object as a minerals so we will notice some are shiny and some are not very shiny that's because these substance reflect light in different ways some can look glassy so shiny there are other that can be described as waxy there are some that do not really reflect light or they are not really very shiny you can also call them dull objects or dull minerals what is this property or the property of reflecting light we term this property as a luster so the luster is a physical property that describes how the light is reflected on the surface of an element well earth has so many minerals in different categories since luster is a property of minerals or elements it also varies widely there are many different types broadly they are metallic and non metallic if you talk about the metallic elements or metallic minerals which are opaque and shiny in appearance and the non metallic minerals or non metallic elements they do not look like metals and have different sub categories which we will be further discussed as the metallic cluster is for minerals or elements that are very opaque and have a reflective and have the look of polished metals some common examples are pyrite which is used for making coins gold nuggets and copper and non metallic luster is a type of luster for elements that do not look like metals or metallic luster they have some different kinds of luster in different non metals this we shall discuss later on before discussing all these let's understand why some metals are very shiny or why non metals are not very lustrous what is the reason behind these elements having a luster let's take a marker first so friends we know that when we talk about elements we talk about metals and non metals right as first if we talk about the metals metals are basically called the lustrous elements as they have a shiny appearance so why they have a shiny appearance because metals contain free electron that vibrates when they come in contact with the light when the electron vibrates they produce their own light this create the shiny or lustrous appearance on the metals or let's discuss in the other way you can also say that metals are lustrous just because of presence of the local ion or mobile electrons that is the free electrons when metal surface is, is exposed to the light then the, these loosely held electron absorbs photon they absorbs the photon that is the light and start oscillating with the same frequency as the incident light these oscillating electrons emit radiations in the form of light and reflect with the same angle as the incident so this metal surface appears to be shiny this is basically a physical concept that's a physics concept 
of a metal having a shiny surface. In conclusion, we can say that a metal is a shiny because metal contains free electrons that vibrates and they come in contact with the light and when electron vibrates they produce their own light which gives them a luster appearance. Now let's talk about the non-metals. Why they are not so very lustrous and why they are not said to be the lustrous element. Why they are dull. As non-metal do not have luster which means that the non-metal do not have shiny surface. The solid non-metal have a dull appearance as they do not reflect light on their surface. We do have some exceptions like diamonds, iodine. They are also non-metals but yes, they have a bit of shiny surface. So now let's understand the types of luster. We have metallic where we know that the metallic luster is for those elements that are opaque and reflect and have the look of polished metal. Some common examples like pirates which are basically used in making coins, gold nuggets. Second we have the submetallic luster. Those elements with the submetallic luster are ones that resemble a metal but due to weathering and corrosion have become less reflective and dull. For example, cinnabar or cephalorite are the examples of submetallic luster. Now if I talk about the non-metallic luster, we have some different types of luster. First is adamantine luster. Basically these elements that have remarkable shine and brilliance and have the hard look of a diamond. They are called adamantine luster. These elements can be transparent or translucent. And the most popular example are found in jewelry and accessory stones like diamonds and cubic zirconia. The second non-metallic luster is the vitreous luster. The reflective property of these elements with the vitreous luster is similar to that of glass which we will be discussing later on. This is a very common type of luster and can occur in elements that are transparent and translucent. Some of these minerals like quartz and calcite. Now let's talk about the greasy luster. This is also one of the non-metallic luster. As the greasy type luster can be found in minerals or the elements that look like they were coated with the oil or grease. These elements can also said to be resemble like fat. They also feel greasy to touch. For example, opal and halite are the two basic examples of greasy luster. Now we have resinous luster. The resinous luster is the luster which is just like a glassy luster. Now we have pearly. Pearly luster is those kind of luster of an element where luster of an element looks like a pearl. Dull luster. Basically all the solid non-metal are having a dull luster that is they don't have a basic luster property or they don't look like metal. They are also called the earthy and is used to describe elements that have a poor reflectivity. The surface of these elements with the dull luster is coarse or porous. Some examples like Montmorino light. Last is the silky luster. Silky luster are those which shines when there is a light. Basically they are also very opaque or they are very thin. So the basic examples of all these lusters we have metallic luster with example pyrites, admantine with the garnet, vitreous with quartz, resinous with sulfur, Greasy with graphite, pearly with talc, shiny luster with calcite, submetallic with hematite, dull luster we have a borax, and metallic luster we have chalcoparites. So now let's come up to the modern periodic table. We know that when we move from left to right, we 
move from metals to non-metals with a hint of no metalloids and when we move from top to bottom in a group we move from non-metals to heavy metals. So keeping this concept in mind let's understand the gradation of physical property. As we know that now metal are more lustrous than non-metals. So in the modern periodic table the gradation of physical property of luster of an element by period is when we move from left to right in the periodic table the property of luster goes on decreasing. Yes, so when we move from group period 1 to 7 or when we move from left to right the property of luster that is a shiny surface or shiny property of an element decreases. Similarly when we talk about the gradation of luster property by group so when we move from top to bottom in a group the property of luster goes on increasing as the metallic character increase when we move from top to bottom in a group. With respect to this property the luster property also increases. So far in the physical properties we have discussed the physical state and luster. So in next session we shall learn about the malleability that is we shall learn the concept of the malleability and the gradation of malleability property in the modern periodic table with respect to groups and periods. Thank you.